We've got to quit lying to ourselves. Watch this. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. In today's episode, we help a man named Mike who finds himself deeply enchanted by a woman he met digitally who goes by the name of Mary. Their connection unfolds after Mike receives an unexpected text from Mary who confesses to mistaking his number for someone else's. Little did he know that this seemingly insignificant encounter would pave the way to an online relationship. A turning point arises as Mike anticipates a substantial sum of money coming his way and contemplates sharing his newfound wealth with his beloved Mary. However, before taking this step, he seeks our assistance to confirm she is who she claims to be. We're gonna get you some clarity. We're gonna look into this for you, but one thing, you can't send her any money. Why not? I mean, I've been doing it. So it wouldn't affect, I'm just saying it wouldn't affect me like that. What? Okay, y'all, it gets worse. Uh, in December, we're supposed to meet. There's no other setback. Can't be. The military doesn't do that. They don't hold you somewhere for three years and don't let you go home. Now, y'all, remember he said that. But now, let's put the pieces of the puzzle together. I'm the kind of guy that I work, man. I don't, I, I work every day. I put in 10 to 12 hours a day. I try to enjoy what I do. I get up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm out by five. I work from five because I like driving during the day versus night. I work from five to five, sometimes five to six, 12 hours, seven days a week. Mm, hard worker, or is it? Could this be an avoidance tactic? Well, as we move forward, we'll find the answer to that. But right now, here's another piece of the puzzle. The last relationship I was in, I was in it for quite some time, over 10 years. And this one person was actually sort of mean to me, a narcissist, sort of a sociopath, controlled me, abused me physically as well as um, verbally. But I, I kind of felt that the relationship was over because I was being put out of my own home. It could be anything, TV, it could be another woman around us. The woman could look a certain way. She would start in on me. I know you were looking at her. I know this, I know that. I know, you know, I always had to defend myself. Even before a situation would come up, she would create a situation. So I always had to be on defense with myself which I did not like. It made me feel very uncomfortable because I felt like I was always better than that. And I didn't need to be in a situation like that. 10 years, y'all. 10 years in a relationship knowing you deserve to be treated better. It's, it's not just women who go through this. It's human beings that go through this, y'all. And... Maybe all his working hours were because he felt like he needed to avoid the drama. Maybe he's avoiding himself. We'll learn more what it's likely to be. But right now, I feel like that he probably should spend some time by himself and work, working through whatever it is that had him in that relationship for 10 years. And now it begins. The hook. In the midst of Mike's relationship, he received a random text from a person that would help him through his rough relationship and change his life. I was at the tail end of that relationship, and this 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 person came in out of nowhere through my texting. I like the photo. So I replied and I asked, I said, well, who is this? And she thought I was somebody else and I wasn't not. That's how we started the conversation. She didn't think he was somebody else, y'all. This is a typical scam. Shoot out at random text to that random phone numbers and see who takes the bait. 
don't answer texts from people you don't know. It's just the way they do it. They count on somebody saying, who is this? Get the conversation started and then start baiting information to manipulate the relationship. She told me her name was Mary. She was very uh, comforting, very, very supportive. She's younger. She was 32. She's beautiful. She's light-skinned. Long hair, like a brown color. She's beautiful, man. She's a beautiful woman. Puerto Rican, beautiful hair, beautiful skin, beautiful pictures. Keyword, comforting, supportive. And how many times did he say beautiful? Those are keys to what hooked him. He was in an unaffirming relationship, being treated like a dog. There was no appreciation there. And in a minute, you'll find out why appreciation is a key for him. But she was baiting, baiting the conversation. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that's why she stole somebody else's pictures. Okay, let's, let's move on. I was honest with her. I told her I was in an unhappy relationship. We sleep in separate rooms. We have no interlinkings. We have nothing. We were just in something and I needed to get out. Yeah, you needed to get out, but you needed to get out, do some healing and then get into another relationship. But this guy is hopping relationships. If, if you have a pattern of relationship hopping, uh, no, you don't want to look y'all. That's what keeps us in toxicity. Now, I'm not telling y'all, y'all need to take 10 freaking years like I have. Okay. But I'm saying that if you keep choosing toxicity, then you need to figure out why. And Another avoidance tactic is relationship hopping. He didn't have the guts to leave that 10 year relationship until he had another one on the hook or she had him on the hook. And so she was comforting with that. She was like, listen, just when she comes at you, argues at you, don't say anything. I was still in that home when we started talking we were sleeping in separate rooms and i was talking to this person every day comforting to me because i was lonely i didn't i um was unhappy and uh she was just the perfect person to talk to at that time very supportive perfect I'm going to spare y'all this diatribe about perfect. There is no perfect. And she was crafting the relationship. Relationship. She was crafting the conversation so that it would draw him in. He's feeding this monster. He's telling her everything she needs to know to, to, to drag him along. Well, she's not dragging him because he's coming quite willingly into this conversation. So that, that, that's why I always say, don't be telling people your pain, your, 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 your hurts. Don't be so quick to give up that aspect of your heart to the wrong people. Let's see how it turned out for him. The more Mike would text Mary, the further he grew apart from his current girlfriend of 10 years. 
I kept giving her chances because that was just the type of person I am. Although I wasn't happy, I kept giving her chances. And then it became a situation to where I couldn't do it anymore. Dude, you're gaslighting yourself. Figure out why you wanted to give her so many chances. Why is that just the person I am? What? No, 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 no. That's who you are. That's who you think you are. Okay, and pay attention, y'all, to the fact that he didn't walk out of that until he had somebody else. I just couldn't do it anymore. That's another gas like, no, you wanted to hop into another relationship and you had it there. So now you're Mr. Big Man and you can leave that mess. But no, that's not who you were born to be. That's not who you truly are. And we have to pay attention to this gaslighting technique when we tell ourselves, oh, I stayed or I stayed with the scammer or in that bad relationship because I have a good heart or I like to give people chances. How many chances and how much of that is to your detriment? No, 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 no. It's not okay to remain where you're mistreated. Now, I'm not talking about domestic violence situations where you have to carefully plan your escape. That's something that you probably can't just jump out of. But in other toxic relationships, y'all, come on now. Come on now. We, we, we tell ourselves whatever is necessary in order to make excuses for why we stayed. That's just, that's just who I am. Uh, uh, that's who you've been twisted into, but that's not who you truly are. Let's figure out who you truly are and figure out why you keep choosing this cyclical toxicity in, instead of happiness. I shouldn't get this upset with this guy. God bless him. Next. Even when I was with her a long time, I took care of her. I did everything for her. Shades of Captain save -a In one of my, I'm not, look, I'm not trying to be rude here, y'all. I'm just trying to call it as it is. And here we have another form of Captain save -a Before we move on, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now back to the show. Now, in another video, I talked in more depth about that. I'll make sure to put that in the end screen so that you can go check it out. But Captain save a Ho is a man who is so insecure with his ability to get women that he seeks out women who are damaged goods for whatever reason, usually because of men mistreating them or treating them badly. Now, the reason why an insecure man who is caught in save a whole mode does this is he, he's trying to be Prince Charming. He's trying to be the, the white knight, knight, the knight in shining armor. And, and this makes him feel superior, superior. It's another avoidance tactic. In order to deal with his insecurities, he becomes Prince Charming in the hopes that the woman will fall in love with him in spite of his unattractiveness or his downfalls. He thinks this is the only way he can find love. Now, let's talk a little bit more about because that's who he is. Well, it's twisted. Trauma twists the good aspects of who we are and takes them overboard in one direction or another. So this would not be throw out the, the, the core of who he truly is, which is a kind man. It's about understanding how the trauma has affected that aspect of who he is. And so now it's twisted into save a whole mode where he would stay with a person mistreating him, putting him out of his own house, okay? And still want, I just want to take care of her. I just want to take care of her. Again, 
He needs to take some time and figure out why he needs to be the savior all the time. And I want us to watch out for this in our own lives because more times than you think, our trauma twists us into rescuers. Um, taking false responsibility for the outcomes of others and jumping in and trying to save the day. So let's move on and see where this goes. And so since I found this beautiful soul, I want to take care of her. And I want to love her and be the things that she wants me to be and love her completely. Be everything to her. It just gradually, gradually just got to the point to where she's my heart. Well, that's unfortunate because that kind of giving, there's a lot of women out here that could appreciate that. And until you deal with the trauma, you'll never find her. This is just heartbreaking. The first time she told me she loved me was about a month into us talking. And for me, it was just what I needed because I was yearning that. Keyword, just what I needed. Up until this point, Mike would do anything for Mary, but the situation got complicated when she claimed she was being deployed. Typical for these scammers is always the military because that gives them cover for why they don't show up. I can't be on camera. I can't come. This, that. I mean, everybody's playing out the same playbook. She's in the military. She told me she was in Afghanistan. So, you know, they sit them out on their their work, do's and don'ts of the military. I can't send you actual pictures that I take right now. I can't uh, FaceTime you. Things I can't do in the military because of our security level. A few times we were supposed to get together, but that didn't happen because of the military prolonging the stay and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. She really didn't ask me for money. It was more like we were discussing some of the things that she had to do with taking care of her relatives and some of the things that she had to pay. So I offered to help her. All I wanted to do was help her. I didn't want her to struggle. I didn't want her to worry, and I still don't. I don't want her to worry about a thing. I want her to to serve her time out and I'll take care of her. Well, of course. She would thank me with all her heart. Thank you for everything you do for me. I really love you. Thank you for what you do for me. It was those type of things that make me gravitate to her because those are the things I hadn't heard or hadn't felt. Exactly. Since Mary has claimed she was deployed to Afghanistan, Mike has essentially been funding her life. He sends her money daily. So if I make 150, I'll send her 75. 1,500 to $2,000 a month. I'm just using 30,000 as a ballpark. Might be 60, let's say 40. Holy shamoly. Maybe this man has to work that much. What a colossal amount of money. Holy mess. <sighs> our trauma will cause our good hearts to walk us straight into some mess every time. Mike is receiving a large amount of money from a settlement soon. He even plans on sharing a portion of it with Mary. This would help her get home and get rid of all the debt he has from sending her money every day. It's coming back to kind of bite me a little bit because I have taxes and we sent through Cash App and Bitcoin. And so now you have to ha be accountable for that. 
thank God I'm getting what I'm getting because I can pay all my ta- everything off. I'll be able to pay everything off the blessing that I, I'm getting. I knew eventually it would come through. So I knew if she was with me, I would be able to take care of her. And the consequences he has to pay. Holy mess. I mean, all the tax burden is on him. Uh, the lost income is on him. He's talking about this settlement, paying debt. He's in debt for this. Okay. And I ain't nobody to talk. Okay. Every bad, toxic relationship I left, left me darn near destitute and bankrupt. <sighs> y'all, y'all. Mm. <sighs> You know, whoever we're supposed to be with. I, my mother told me young. She said, Linda, God has one man for each woman. And he has chosen your mate. Now, if you follow that, if she was right, that I'm in making some really wrong decisions in my life. And I hope that Whoever this person is that's made for me is not so traumatized that it's twisted them out of who God created them to be. And I'm fighting my way back from the twistedness so that I can be all God created me to be. This man is up to his neck in this. She even sent me some documents to say she I'm her fiance so I gave up my information it was a document that was told to me that we had to submit uh to show that I was her fiance booyah pay dirt she got what she wanted from him she got what she wanted and he was in such denial, gaslighting himself, that he didn't even see that for in your face warning. Um, I don't want to believe that. That she's scamming me. No, I don't believe that. I believe that she is who she is. It would break my heart. It would break my heart. I believe her. I believe her. Totally believe everything she tells me. Everything. Gaslighting himself again. Gaslighting himself again. If you believe it all, then why did you call the catfish team? See, we get gut feelings. We have these inklings. And how many times have I watched these shows where at some point the person being scammed writes to the scammer, oh, this is a scam. I don't believe you. And then they get what they want to hear back. They get gaslit back. It's like they get the attitude with them and threaten not to talk to them anymore. And then like little puppies, they run back. We be knowing something ain't right, and we repeatedly gaslight ourselves into not believing the truth. But 50 bucks a day is still $1,500 a month. And if you've been talking for two years, I mean, that's like close to $30,000. Yeah, I, I've been doing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and by the way, I'm not here to judge you. I'm just saying, Mike, give us a week. I mean, I've been doing it. So it wouldn't affect, I'm just saying it wouldn't affect me like that. Look, you're a grown man, you make your own decisions. I'm just giving you the advice that we give all of our clients. I know, I know you guys are. Um, so if I did send this money every day or every other day or whatever, what would that do? Mike, it doesn't look good. Like you haven't met her in person. You haven't, you haven't talked to her on the phone. I know all that. You haven't, I know all that. It's just not good to send, keep sending her money until we can give you clarity. But what I'm saying is, would that, if I still, if I sent her this little money, would that affect anything? It's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect Drew. But 
you know, like you came to us for a reason. You came to us because something in the back of your mind is telling you your spidey sense is, is kicking off right now. And it's like, hey, Mike, something's going on here. Based on what you're telling us, the advice, and we deal with hun literally hundreds of thousands of people a year come to us. Yeah. And so, so I'm just trying to help you out. In the end of the day, Mike, if you want to still send her money, send her money. But I personally don't think you should do it. My, my colleague here, Drew, agrees with me. But in the end of the day, it's really it's really up to you. I've said it way too much to let two hundred and fifty bucks or two hundred dollars affect anything. And this is where we get in trouble, y'all. We won't take wise advice from other people. This guy even told his family about this, and they were asking him questions and yada yada. But it was like I'm seeing her. Period. <laughs> so why are you talking to me about it? This guy was so entrenched that when it came to the part of the show where they bring all the ev evidence of scam, the woman texted him while they were talking and he could not ignore it. He's over here. They're, they're talking to him and he's over here. Can't stay off the phone. It was just ter terrible. And when I said earlier, it gets worse. This is the worst it got. He would not listen to these people. I have a question for you. Mm hmm Did you send her money? Yeah. Since we last spoke? Yeah, a little bit. Mm hmm So the team got in touch with this woman, and clearly she was not the picture, okay? Uh, and then, so the scammer had the nerve to get an attitude, blame him for not, they're not getting together, and basically said they offered to fly him over there. And the, the scammer said, no, he didn't come before, so I've fallen out of love with him. Oh, you didn't. You wasn't in love in the first place, and the gig is up, okay? They finally put him in touch directly to talk directly to the woman whose picture it was. And you just saw him shrinking and his heart breaking. So anyway, we are the worst gaslighters in the world. We are worse than the narcissist at gaslighting ourselves. And we have to accept that if it's something that we don't want to believe, we get what we call confirmation bias and we reject every information that comes our way to the contrary. We receive and accept all information that comes our way to support what we want to believe. And that ain't the way to make it through this trauma, y'all. I'm going to leave it right there. Always remember your greatest power is realizing the truth of who you are know that truth. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. Thank you.